Okay, guys. So, when the Parashat Chaye Sarah, we learned yesterday, uh, one of the tests of Avram Avinu, that Sarah passes away, and he's looking for a burial site where to bury Sarah. We saw that he just, it was not just a, you know, a solution to find just a space to bury Sarah. We believe that it had to be a special place to bury Sarah. And Ava Mavino was looking also for a family site, a burial site. And that was very common back in the day that the important people, the, the, the people in the country, the important people had their own lot, their own cemetery, their own site that they'll bury over there, the family. And strangers that come from outside, they have a general cemetery where, could they, where, could, where they could bury the people. And Avam Avinu was looking for the specific site, not only for a family site, a very specific place. He was looking for Ma'arat HaMachpela. By the way, you know what's the Hebrew word Ma'arat HaMachpela? What's the Hebrew words for Ma'arat HaMachpela? What is Oh, the cave of double. What it means, the cave of double. So it was given the name for the doubles, the couples that will be buried over there. Adam, Arishon, and Chava are already buried over there. And three more couples will be buried over there. Avram and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, and Yaakov and Leah. So the machpala means the doubles for the hint that a few couples will be buried over there. Okay, now, also you know the word uh, Hebron, the name, Marat HaMachpela is in Hebron. Hebron stands for Chaver, friend, and it stands also for Chibur. And Ava Mavinu sensed that that place is special for a burial site because that's the best place to link Lechaber, to connect for the dead, dead body that will connect with his neshama to Hashem, Chibur, to connect. Okay, let's, uh, let's go on. So we saw exactly yesterday the whole negotiation of Ava and Vinu with the local people, the people of Bnei Chet. We saw exactly all the stages that the negotiation that he's asking, and they say no, and yes, and yes, and no. And then finally, finally, they come to the conclusion, and he pays big coins of 400 coins of silver to acquire that place, the field, and the cave, and that allowed Ava Mavinu to, to once he bought the field, he's allowed to do whatever he wants with the cave. The cave was nullified to the field. Those, that's briefly the idea that that was the solution that, the, that they were able to do this deal. Okay, before we go on, I just want to share with you uh, something very important. We started in the first verse, and we said the life of Sarah was for 127 years. And Rashi says, Shnei chayei Sarah, the life of Sarah, kulan shavim letova, was all good. You hear the Rashi? All her life, 127 years, was good. Yesterday we mentioned that she, right, uh, 100 like 20, 20 like 7. But more than that now, Rashi is saying that it was all good. How can you say this, guys? How can you say that all her life was good? Didn't she go through a lot of challenges, problems in her life? She didn't have children for 90 years. She was taken twice by different king, kings. She went, right, in Egypt in, uh, by Avimelech. She's traveling with Avraham Avinu all over. So all these tests of Avraham Avinu, actually, she was challenged also. How can you say that all her life was good, kulam shavim letova, all her life was equally good. How can you say that? 
So the answer is the following, an unbelievable story, guys. Reb Nassim Tzvi Finkel, he was the Rosh Yeshiva of Mir, right? Not too far from here. And he met once a big group of businessmen that were visiting from America, some CEOs, big companies, investors, directors, a big nice, uh, nice group that came to visit from America, Israel, talking years ago. Rav Nassim Tzvi Finkel himself passed away, I believe. Sorry? Yeah, I believe it's eight, ten years ago, something like that. So he met this group. They came to visit. They went to one of the sites that they wanted to see. It was the Mir Yeshiva. And they were very impressed. Uh, you know, thousands of people learning in all kind of different places and buildings and Batei Midrashim. They were very impressed. And then they went home to him. He sat with them for a while and he spoke to them. And he said to them, what is the message that you think that we have to learn from the Holocaust? What is the message? That's what he asked them. What do you think what they said? So, hmm, what do you think what they said, the people? So one said, well, we need a strong Israel to have a strong state, to have an army in place, police, to have a, a lot of PR done for Israel, to have some power in the Senate, in the Congress, in America. So those are the ideas that was thrown on the table. That's what we need, right? Strong army, strong country, strong economy, strong connections with the America. So he said, that's all right. In the Hishtadlut, this has to be done. But that's not the message of the Holocaust. You know what is the message of the Holocaust? Listen to what he says. Sorry? Oh. He says, look at the people, how they act. People that went through the Holocaust, terrible, terrible situations. Difficult even to describe what they went through. There were people that the whole time thinking, how could I help my friend? To give him a little piece of bread for my bread. To give him, you know, two teaspoons of my soup to give him. To help him to carry the bricks. To help him carry to, to, to dig the pits. Whatever it was, you had two kinds of people. Obviously, you can't judge no one who went, went through this. Correct. You can't judge. How could you? But what's amazing, said Rabbi Nassim Tzvi Finkel, is how people act and how people behaved. There were people that did not lose the Tselem Elokim. Tselem Elokim, man, human being who's created with the image of God. What it means, the image of God, that Hashem blew, uh, blew into us the Neshama. This is the only creature in the world that has both body and soul. So when a man is acting like a human being, he's caring and showing the Tselem Elokim. But when a man is losing it, so he desecrated this idea of Tselem Elokim. How Hamas was acting now, they desecrated Tselem Elokim. Acting like monsters, killing, killing, slaughtering, brutal, with no, with no mercy children, babies, women, that's, that's desecrating the Tselem Elohim that they were created. That's the worst thing that you could say on somebody that he's not Tselem Elohim. Human being acting that way are desecrating this idea of Tselem Elohim. Anyways, let's go back. So if Nelson Tzvi Finkel says to them, this is the big message. When somebody goes through life, and he, met, and he had challenges, he had problems, he had issues, he had things to work out. And he managed, and he did it in the right way, he went through, and he acted, and he behaved in the right way. That's good, that's tov. And that's what Rashi is saying over here. 
all the years of Sarah, 127 years that Sarah lived, and she went through challenges. She's traveling from Ava, with Avo Mavinu, leaving all the luxury back in Haran. They had a lot of cars, villas, pools. Everything was there, available. They live in that back behind in Haran, coming with Avo Mavinu to Knaan. Well, guess what? A famine, no food. She doesn't complain and say to Avo Mavinu, Hey, well, what happened? Why you told me to come here? What's going on? They travel to Egypt. They take her away. She's in captivity. She was taken away. She was stolen from Avon Avinu. They come back here in Israel. Back, they have problem with the neighbors of Imelech. Again, they take her away. And that's what it means. She went through life. And she succeeded. When somebody's doing it right in the right way and he succeeded, that's the good. And that's what Rashi means here, that all he is, right, were good, meaning she went through life and all the experiences and challenges that she had, she succeeded. And that's why we could say that all her years were good. Man, when mission is accomplished in the right way, that's what it means good. When everybody has through in life issues, challenges, situations, times, that we have to overcome it and maneuver it in the right way. And when somebody succeeds, that's what it means that he had mission accomplished, and that's good. Okay, so that was the great lesson of Rab Nassim Tzvi Finkel, the Rosh Hashiva of Mir, that he shared with the people visiting from America and telling them, this is the story of a Jew, this is the story of life. When one is acting in difficult times, Miserable times, he's acting and behaving according to what he's supposed to and going out of his way to help others, that's considered good. Okay, guys, let's go on. Chapter 24. Avraham Zaken, we have it, everybody's okay? What page is it? 108. Chapter 24, we're moving on, so Sarah was buried finally in Marat Machpela, and Ava Mavinu owns the place, and we're moving on. The Avram Zaken, he's becoming elderly. Baba Yamim, he's coming, came with the days, Vashem Berachet Avraham Bakol. So Avram is becoming older, and Hashem blessed them with all. So, first, what it means, he's old and he, Baba Yamim. He's coming with the days. What is Baba Yamim? Can you come without days? Huh? Yeah, right, that's what it means. Zaken, he's old. Baba Yamim, he's coming. What is coming with the days? Oh. So, the message here, some commentaries point out, I think we mentioned this idea also by Sarah, but you see the same thing by Rav Mavinu. Baba Ami means all the years that he lived, he, he lived the days, he came with the days. You know, there was, uh, there are different, you have this calendar, right? So there are people that every month, the month is over, what they do, they tear the piece of paper, they tear that month, right, into the garbage. That month is over. There are people that live life like that. Oh, another day is over. Right? Even we have this bad expression, I have to kill some time. I have some time to kill. That's not Avram Avinu, guys. Avram Avinu, Baba Yamim, he's coming with every day. Every day he accomplished, every day he achieved, every day was growth. And Avram Avinu is becoming old, hundred, whatever it is now, he's up over 100. But this is a man uh, over 100 with the days. There are people that lived their life 100 years without the days. What did you do yesterday? What did you do 20 years ago? What you did with your life? Oh, whatever. Oops. Avram Avinu is coming with the days. 
meaning that he achieved, was growth every day, and every day, he is not only one of those that just tears that month and throws it to the trash, he collects them, right? Approaches to add, not to get rid of the old months and throw them to the trash, rather to add them. So he has a, all the days are coming with him, he has a, he's carrying on all the days because every day is achievement, every day is a growth, and he's moving forward. Okay, Hashem berachet Avraham bakol. Hashem blessed him with what? Everything. Everything, with all, with all that is possible. Rashi says, bakol, look at Rashi, can you see Rashi? Bakol ole begimatria, the word bakol, counts for the gematria ben. Bakol, the word bakol. So bet is how much? Two. Two. Chaf is? Twenty. Lamed is? Thirty. Comes out? Fifty-two. How much is ben? The word ben? Fifty-two. So Rashi says, bakol ole begimatria ben, umeachar, once shayalo ben, hayat sarich lasio isha. Once he had a son, and Isaac is, we know, if this is right after the Akedah, we know that he's at least 37 years old. So he has to go to Shiduchim, guys. He has to send his resume all over and call all the Shatchanim and Shatchaniot and to inform them, right? Hey, my son is in Shiduchim. Do you have somebody? So a little bit differently back in the day without using Facebook and email. So Avraham is sending his servant to find a good match to his son Yitzchak. Okay, so that's what Rashi says. That's what it means. Bakol, it means that he had a son and he has to take care of him. He has to find a shidduch. So let's see, let's start what he's going to do. Vayomer Avraham elavdo. So Avram is saying to his servant, which is Eliezer, Skan Beito, the elder manager in his house, Hamoshel, that is ruling, take, looking after. Bechol asher lo. Eliezer was taking care of all what Avram Avinu had. Right? His bank accounts, his offices, his farm, everything, the orchards, everything Eliezer was in charge, meaning that Avram trusted him 100%. It was uh, Avram Avinu felt very comfortable with Eliezer, and Eliezer was taking care of it, and Avram Avinu blindly trusted him a hundred percent. So, Vayomer Avraham pasuk bet el avdos kan beito the elder of his house, Hamoshel that is ruling left looking after bechol ashelo all what he has. Simna yadchi yadcha tachat yerichi. So he wants him to take an oath that he should hold on to him and swear that he'll do the next mission that he wants him to do. So he tells him, puts his hand on, on his leg. Pasuk 3. And I'll, take, I'll make you to take an oath in the name of God. The God of heaven. The, the God of the land. Asher lo tikach. Don't take, don't you dare take Isha, a woman, Libni, to my son, Mibnota Knani, from the local girls of Knan, Asher Anochi, which I am Yoshev Bekirbo. So he's telling Eliezer, I want you to take an oath that you'll go find a girl, a proper girl for my son, but don't dare think to take somebody from the local girls over here in Knan. Where, yes, Pasuk Dalet, where I want you to go, Ki El Arti, go to my land, Moladeti, my place of birth, Telech, you should go. Velakachta, and you'll take Isha Libni Leyitzchak. I want you to go to my family, to my country, the other way around. Go to my country, to my place that I was born, and my family, and find over there the right girl for Yitzchak. Okay, 
first, let's, let's uh, figure out two points. Why Avram Avinu, why is it that the boy is looking after to go to look for a shidduch? Why is not the other way around? Why the girl is not looking for a shidduch? And it's custom till today that the boy has to make more efforts to find a shidduch. From what's the source for this? That's right. Avam Avinu is sending Eliezer. But from where that came? So that Avam, right, you're right that this is the first place that we see it as a story. But what's the source for it? So, the Talmud teaches us like this, guys. We know that men, right, Adam Arishon, was the two, two, what we call it, two bodies together, male and female. And Hashem says, Lotto viot Adam levado. It's not good that it's in this format. Let me take and separate them. Eselo, I'll create, I'll make, Ezer help kenegdo. Meaning better, instead of being one unit attached the whole time together as one unit, let me separate them and make them two bodies. And they'll always, she will be there to help him. Eselo, Ezer kenegdo. And that's the idea that the right and Hashem puts asleep Avam Avinu and he takes the bone and he creates Chava. So the idea is like this, guys. This is in the very beginning in creation that man feels that something goes taken from him. Hashem took out the bone from Adam Arishon and created the female. When you lose your wallet, when you use your, lose your phone, are you looking for it? Or you said, oh, whatever, if somebody finds it, he'll reach out to me. What? You notice right away, right? And if it's your phone, for sure. So you right away, you are looking for it. The Talmud says, Balha Aveda, the owner of the lost object, He's the one that should look after the object that he lost. Right, it's a mitzvah in the Torah that people that find something, they should announce and return it. But you have to do the efforts, right? Bal ha'aveda, the Talmud teaches us. Bal ha'aveda, the one that lost it, mechazer, he should be looking for what he lost. So, so to speak, man always feels that he lost something. He needs his match. He needs his partner. So he always feels that he's missing something. He's the one that has to put the efforts, more efforts, to go to find his match, to go to find his birth shirt. It was, this is how God created it. That, that's how the bone was taken from him. He always miss, feels that he's missing something. And that's why naturally, built in, that man is looking after his birth shirt, what he's missing. Where's my helper? Where's my second part? To be complete, to be a couple. So that's why, that's the source for this idea, guys, that man is looking for what he lost. And Ava Mavinu is sending a messenger to go to find the proper girl. Now, what Avam is saying, guys, why he doesn't want the local girls? What's the problem with the local girls from Canaan? They're evil. They're evil. Uh, what's what's what they evil? What's so bad about them? They didn't go to Beit Yaakov, huh? For Knan, right? Well, what's so bad in Knan? Only only worshiping idols. Oh, so listen carefully, right? Yizzy, yeah, you're with us. You okay? You don't. Ava Mavina doesn't want. The bad gr girls from Canaan, right? Eh, bad people. What are you sending, Eliezer, to go to Haran, right? From where he came, his family, his birthplace, his country. 
and, ch and find the right girl from there, from Haran. What do you think? The girls in Haran are going to Beit Yaakov? They're, they're not worshipping idols? Well, let me tell you, they're not going to Beit Yaakov. They are worshipping idols. Lavan, Betuel, who is there? That's his family. His, right? That's his family. So, what are you gaining? What's all, what are you gaining if you're sending to Haran? They're not, they're not exactly righteous people. So the Kli Akar says something fundamental, and he says the following. The people in Knan are bad, not only for worshipping idols, though, though, they're bad for that also. But they are bad in their behavior, and their midot, in the character traits. Avam Avinu doesn't want people that are bad in their midot. That's very hard to fix. And especially if they grew up over here and they're going to stay here, right? Avraham Avinu doesn't want Yitzchak leaving the land of Israel. You know that Yitzchak never left the land of Israel. You know that. He was brought up on the altar. He got to the point that he's so holy that he was binded and he was put up on the altar. He never, he never left Israel. Interesting, Avraham left several times. Yaakov later will leave several times also. But each means that each person, the patriarchs, each one is born in a certain time and each one has a certain mission. Avraham Avinu had to travel all over. Yitzchak had to stay here. Again, Yaakov had to travel, come back, go to exile, etc. But anyways, Avraham Avinu is telling him, no way you're taking my son to their Teharan. You got to bring him here. And the Kliakar explains the following. Avram Avinu doesn't want people with bad character traits, with bad midot, because that's very hard to get rid of it. He'd rather go to Haran and take and find a girl from there. Yes, that they worship idols, the Avadeh Avadah Zarah, but that's something that you could get rid of. That's something that you could take a few classes in Neve Yerushalayim, Right? And we'll take care of it. She'll clarify Avraham Avinu just like he did with all a thousand other people. And he explained to them, guys, stop worshipping idols. These statues, these power that you believe in. is only one creator that created all this. There's only one power that is running this world. So Avraham Avinu, that he could take care of very easily. Forget about the statues that you're worshipping back in the day. Come to my family and I'll take care of it. So Avam Avinu is not worried about Avodah Zarah. Avam Avinu is worried about Midot. Midot is the essence of the person. Avodah Zarah is a mindset, a uh, 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 thinking, a belief. You, we could deal with it. We could explain. We could, it's a logic. We could explain it. Midot is the essence of the person. And Avam Avinu is saying to Eliezer, no way, I don't want girls from Knan. They grew up over here with this bad midot. They'll continue to live there and here and they'll have influence by the others. And they're not going to change. But if you get a girl from Haran, which they have good midot, they are the family of Avam Avinu, so I'll take care of the worshiping of the idols. She won't be influenced by the others. She didn't grow up over here. And she'll be with me together, and we'll take care of that. So that's why it's so significant, so important to have Avinu. He in no way he wants the girls of Knan. He only wants the girls from his family, his country, in Haran. Okay, yes. If that's true, then why was Ripta praised for having good meals in the house of the Okay, now it doesn't mean that, that all the people in, uh, by, by over there in Haran had good midas, but you so could find more of a chance to find good people over there than here. Yeah, it doesn't mean that everybody is perfect. Yes, correct. We'll see, actually, indeed, yes, that is not that everybody is perfect, but uh, the, bad, the bad character trait, the bad midot behavior of people that was happening in Haran at least didn't exist over there. You know that uh, last week, guys, Avram Avinu was praying for Sdom, right? Hashem wants to turn over Sdom. Why, why, why he wants to turn over Sdom? 
bad people. And what does Avraham Avinu pray? Oh God, maybe there, he starts, maybe there are 50 righteous people that are over there, and Rashi explains that there are five cities. So maybe each one has a million, right? 50. So each one has a 50. Can you save this town if it's 50 people? And Hashem says, yes. Now, what do you think, guys? You think really there are really righteous people over there? So not really. The commentaries explain righteous compared to Sdom. Sdom are totally, right, off the track and acting like, right, crazy in their way. So when Avraham Avinu is praying and saying maybe there are 50 righteous people, it doesn't mean that there are 50 Reb Chaim Kanievskis over there. It means relatively to Sdom, meaning there are 50 people that are not so bad like them. So you could consider them righteous to a certain degree. Okay, let's go. Pasuke. Vayomer elav ha'evet, ulai lo tove, so Eliezer hears this mission that Avraham Avinu wants to hire him to appoint him. So he says, but one second, ulai, maybe, lo tove, she won't want, ha'isha, the women, la lechet acharai, what happens if the woman doesn't want to follow me, el ha'aretz azot, to bring her here to here? Ha'ashev ashivet bincha, should I return your son el ha'aretz asher yatsata misham? So, Eliezer is saying, okay, I hear the idea. You want a girl from there, from Haran, and not from Knan, not from the local people here in Knan. And you want me to bring the girl to here. But what happens if she doesn't want? Can I bring Isaac to there? Can I take out Isaac from the Holy Land and move him to America? No, to Haran. Right? Can I do that? Vayomer elav Avraham. So Avraham says, he shamar lecha, be careful. Pen, perhaps tashivet bni shama. Be careful from doing this. That, okay, be careful for, uh, from doing this, from taking Yitzchak to the outside of Israel, to Haran. Meaning, this is not an option. This is not an option. I want a girl from there, from the good families over there, and I want you to bring her to here, and they'll live here, Yitzchak cannot live, leave the Holy Land. Pasuk Zayn. Yes? Why is this the lesson of Tashiv? He's never been there. Like why return? Oh. So it means to return because Avram Avinu is there, the family of Avram Avinu. The roots of Avram Avinu were there in Haran. So if he takes Yitzchak to there, he's returning one of the members of the family to his place. That's why it could be returned. Okay. Um, let's see Pasuk Zayn. Hashem Elokei Hashemayim, the God of heaven, Asher Lekachani, who took me, Mi Beit Avi, he took me out from where I grew up in Haran, from the house of my the house of my father, Umeeretz Moladeti, the land where I where I was born. Vasher Diberli, he spoke to me. Vasher Nishbali, he he made an oath an oath to me. Lemor lezaracha to the land etenet aretz azot. Who he shlach? He'll send Malacho, his angel lefanecha. He'll send the angel to help you on this mission. Ve'lakachta and you'll take Isha livni misham. So Avraham Avinu is telling Eliezer, one second, one second, just that you should get a bit perspective and background. The God that helped me to go out from the house of my father, the land where I grew up, he spoke to me several times, and we did have a covenant that he wants to give to my descendants this land, lemar lezaracha, to your descendants at ten ta'aretz azot. That God will come to you, will send a messenger, an angel, to come to you, velakachta isha livni lesham, 
and you'll take a woman, you'll, you'll find, Bezat Hashem, the proper girl for my son. So he's helping, really what he's doing, Avraham Avinu, he's telling him, the major, Siata Dishmaya, the same God that helped me till today, will continue to help me in his ways by providing miracles above nature to find the right girl. Let's just see another one, Pasuk, Pasuk Chet, and he specifies and he says it very clear. Vim lo haisha, and if she doesn't want, la lechet acharecha, if she doesn't, the woman doesn't want to follow you, veniketa mishvuati, and you'll be clean for my of. If she doesn't want to come to here, so don't worry, you don't have to bring her to here. Look how Avram Avinu has this confidence and no doubts that this is not an option. This is not an option to take Yitzchak to there. The girl must come to here. But let me ask you guys, and what happens if uh, Eliezer finds a perfect girl, nice girl, right? All the conditions, right? But she doesn't want to come. She's not oh, that's the idea. If she doesn't want to come, that means she is not the right one. And that's the message. When you know 100% something, and Yitzhak, Avram Avinu know that Yitzhak cannot leave the land. That's the truth. That's the emet. He cannot leave the land. He wants the right girl with the good midot, like we said. But she must come to here. How will it work out? Don't worry. Hashem will help you. Siyata Dishmaya. When you do the Hishtadlut, Avam Avinu is saying to Eliezer, you do what you have to do. You have to travel to Haran. You'll have to take a lot of camels with a lot of gifts and jewelry and all that to travel. Yeah, you'll have to do the Hishtadlut. And Hashem will provide. Okay, we'll stop here for today.